not swirling and tapping the espresso. I see this all the time and, and people, they get excited. You have your shot done, you finished your milk and you just wanna get to that pour. I totally understand, but there's a couple problems here. You don't tap out that espresso and there are bubbles in that espresso. Well, those bubbles are gonna stay there and they might even mix into your design and then pop in your design, which won't look good later or they end up being there with the final cup when you serve it to somebody, which also just looks not good. When you think about latte art, you can think of the pitcher spout coming out of the, the pitcher that you pour with as the paintbrush. The bigger the spout, the bigger the paintbrush. A fine line spout is more like a fine line paintbrush. And then a wider spout is more like a roller for a wall. Well, then the cup and the coffee in the cup is gonna act as our canvas that we draw on. And if you don't swirl the espresso just a little bit, well, then we're not gonna have an even canvas to pour into. There is an over swirling. If you swirl too much, you will dissipate and separate some of that crema on top. And the crema, though it can be ugly if it's not swirled, is actually pretty helpful for latte art. So we wanna retain some crema for our pour. You'll also see competitive baristas sometimes stack their cups in competition to preserve more of that crema. And then they, of course, swirl it and tap it, but they do so in a minimal way. That way they can preserve as much crema as possible and get as much pop in the cup as possible. Moving on, number two, being too high and too low during the integration phase of latte art. Integration is the beginning part of the pour. What we do is we take a little bit of steamed milk and we mix it with our espresso. And we're doing this for two reasons. It raises the height of the espresso in the cup, which makes it easier for us to land our pitcher on top and get close to the surface, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The other thing that it does is it makes a semi-homogenous mixture of milk and espresso. If you were to pour just into the espresso, it wouldn't work as well because it's a little bit more watery and there is some foam in the crema, but it's not the same viscosity as the milk. And if the milk and the espresso are similar viscosities, it'll be easier for that milk to glide on top. So we always wanna integrate our milk first. Let's talk about the technique for integration. What you wanna do is into the center of the cup, you want to use a pencil's width flow. And all I mean by that is that the flow coming out of the spout of the pitcher is about as wide as a pencil. If you don't go directly in the center and you end up hitting a wall, well, what's gonna happen is some of that foam is gonna displace off that wall and glide on top of your espresso. So you wanna avoid hitting the walls and you wanna to try to aim for the center. So the common mistake that people do whenever they're integrating is either not being in the center or being too high or too low. I see too low more often than too high, but we'll go over both of them. If you're too high above the cup, what's gonna happen is you're gonna break up that stream and when it lands into the espresso, it's gonna make more bubbles and it's going to mess up your design and that even canvas that we're working so hard to accomplish. On the opposite, if you're too close to the espresso, well then you're gonna leave behind a little bit of foam. And the reason for that is there is a key principle in latte art that if we are close to the surface, white foam will appear. If we are really, really high up, that foam will sink underneath the espresso if our milk is good. And if we're somewhere in between, well then we're gonna get beige lines. You can kind of think of this like a gradient. The closer you get, the more beige is going to appear. And then the closer and closer you get to the surface, the more white is going to appear. So the problem here is that when people integrate too close to the surface, they're gonna get mixed match of some foam sinking and some foam floating on top, which is also going to destroy our canvas. I'm sorry I hit you, little bud. Are you okay? We're friends. You wanna say hi? No, you don't get to talk. We're not close friends. Number three, starting too late or too early. So another reason that we integrate is that we are raising the amount of coffee in the cup. That way we can get closer to the surface. Like before we were saying, the closer we get, the more white our lines are gonna be. But there's another phenomenon that's happening here. If you start too soon, well then you're going to have a lot of space for that milk to fill the cup. So if you want your design to be bigger and have a bigger impact, well then you wanna start the design earlier and have a lessened integration. If you want your design to be smaller, well then you wanna fill the cup up more before you start your pour. But there's a catch here. If you fill your cup up even more, well there's going to be more foam in the cup. So it's gonna make it slightly harder for you to pour the design. So you'll have to use a heavier flow if you decide to wait to fill up the cup. For example, if I were to fill a cup up all the way to the top and not tilt it, and then start the design, well, what's gonna happen is my design is gonna show up if I get close enough and I have good foam, but it's gonna be teeny tiny. Versus if I had started sooner, it would be fuller and larger. 
Now, some of that also depends on your flow rate, but generally speaking, if you start your pour sooner, it will be fuller. And if you start it later, it will be smaller. It'll have less time and less space to take up. So to avoid pouring too much or too little, it's really dependent on what design you want. But generally speaking, what I like to do is I like to wait until the back wall of the cup has been covered by espresso. That way the rest of the wall is curved and not flat. If you start so early that there is a flat wall at the back of your cup whenever it is tilted, well that design is gonna go towards that flat wall and it's gonna warp in the shape of that flat wall. And it's not gonna look rounded and beautiful. And then when the cup actually repositions to a rounded shape, it's gonna warp that design even more. So to avoid that, we always wait until the crema has passed that flat part of the back of the cup. Number four, loose grip. I'm gonna use this Starbucks picture because it's, it's easier to show you what I mean by this when I say loose grip. Okay, so this is pretty common. People will hold the spout, but they'll do it loose in their hand to where when they ripple, they're not able to get any control over the wave. If you can't control the wave, well then you're not gonna be able to control what your design looks like. And these waves that we're talking about, we call ripples or wings if you're making it for the base of a pour. Best practices to correct this is to simply pinch the top of the pitcher right here like so. Can you see that? We are pinching with our thumb and our index. And I'm also using my, my middle finger, but um, you don't have to. Once you're pinching the pitcher, that is a tongue twister. Pinching the pitcher, pinching the pitcher, pinching the pitcher. Once you're pinching the pitcher, what you're doing is you're creating something that is stabilizing it while you rock it. If it was too stable, well then you're gonna get these staggered kind of lines because you're holding it too stiff. But if you're holding it too loose, you're gonna have the opposite problem. You're not gonna get really any lines or your lines are gonna be super chaotic and dependent on the way that the natural liquid wants to move. But we can control that with simple pinch. Not too hard, not too soft. Uh, Goldilocks rule for everything. Moving on, number five, proximity. Now we actually, I already talked about this a little bit, but I wanted to go into a bit more detail. So like we were saying before, the golden rule in latte art is that the closer you get to the surface, the more of a design you're gonna leave behind. And the higher up you are, the more it sinks. Now, this principle can be used throughout the design. For example, in the integration phase, we are using the milk to mix into the espresso, but we're sinking the milk. And then as soon as we want the design to appear, we're going to get as close as we can to the surface of the coffee. And at the very end of the design, we end up using that sinking method again by cutting up and away on a diagonal with the pull through. So this concept of, of height is used a lot in latte art. And if you remember my mapping out a pour video, which I'll link right here, um, not a lot of you saw it, but that's okay. I still love you. Height ultimately will determine how crisp your lines are. The goal in latte art is to get close to the surface of the coffee. If you've ever seen on my Instagram, which is pretty fun, we do hollow hearts a lot and the hollow hearts are the exact embodiment of that rule. If you go up high, even in the middle of the pour, well then you can sink the design, but you can use the force of the flow, which sounds like a Star Wars reference, but you'll use the force of the flow to shape the design in a way that looks like a heart, even though you're not leaving behind any foam. And if you don't think you can get close enough, well, there's probably a reason for that, which is actually number six, not tilting enough. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt our cup. That way we are increasing the amount of stuff we can add by tilting it sooner rather than later. And we talked about this earlier about starting too late and starting too early. Well, tilting your cup is gonna be how you dictate that other than how much milk you add. So I have a dirty cup here. And let's say there was liquid in this cup, which actually we can make happen. So you have liquid in the cup, right? And if you wanted to get close to the surface, well, you can see here, I'm not quite close enough to leave behind the design. I'm still about an inch above, but I can't get my pitcher in there anymore at this point. So what you have to do is you have to commit to the tilt. You need to be confident in your tilt. If you're tilting to the point where it is almost hitting the rim, well then you're in a good place because now you have full access to how close you can get to the surface of that coffee. But if you're only halfway tilting, well, you're not gonna be able to get close enough and what's gonna happen is you're gonna pour into the center. You're gonna see a beige design start to appear and then as the milk meets up to your spout, well then it's gonna start to turn white because like the rules we've been discussing, the closer you are, the more white and crisp the design is. But if you're slightly above, you'll get beige. 
Sometimes people get both. Actually, a lot of times people get both. This is one of the most common things I see. Just being an inch above too high is gonna be the thing that ruins that pour. So commit to the tilt, add your milk, but make sure you're always counter tilting every time you add liquid so that you don't spill uh, dirty, dirty milk juice all over your counter or your floor or your child. <laughs> Number seven, which is actually in my 10 mistakes people do with milk steaming video, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it back because it's just so important. That's having thin milk. If your milk is thin, then you're not gonna be able to leave behind a design. And the reason is there's no foam. You might get a little bit of a design, but what's also gonna happen is the way that the milk flows out of the pitcher is gonna act a lot more like water. It's just gonna flow out like, like natural fluids flow out. So your design's gonna be warped and crinkly and weird. If you're doing this, I just encourage you to find a way to add more air to your milk. If you're using a classic style machine that has a steam wand that you can control, then next time add a little bit, just a little bit more air and keep doing that until you start to see the design appear. So if the next time you add a little bit more air but it's not enough, well then next time add a little bit more. Now if you're injecting your air very aggressively, then you're not gonna have good foam and it's not gonna matter. So you wanna add your air gently, but methodically. Make sure you're adding the right amount for the drink you wanna pour. So we're gonna take a break for just one second because I have a really exciting announcement. Latte art is a lot like handwriting. Everybody's style is a little different. And because of that, it's really hard to talk about universal concepts of, of stylistic and aesthetic choices in a broad way per video. So what I'm doing is I'm going to give you guys free lessons on this channel, but the only catch is those lessons are gonna be posted on the channel for other people to learn from. But not only are you gonna get a lesson, Slow Pour Supply has been super awesome to send a bunch of these pictures. Now if you've been watching my channel, you know that this is my pitcher of choice. This is the Round Spout 650 milliliter pitcher from Slow Pour Supply. I really love this thing. I talk about it in my videos. This is my favorite picture literally on the market. All you have to do is go to the subreddit linked below in the description and on that Reddit, you just have to post a video of yourself pouring latte art. That's it and you're in the competition. Now I only have 11 of these to give away to you guys. So that means only 11 people will receive one. For everyone else, you can still enter to end up being on the channel and doing tutorials with me, but you may not get a chance to win this. In the future, we might do more giveaways through that same platform, so it never hurts to submit. And if you want me to like personally critique with your latte art, dude, that's a win-win right there. The selection is gonna end up being done randomly. The pictures can be shipped to anyone who lives in North America, or if you live in a country with low shipping costs, I'd be glad to make that adjustment for you. There are some countries where shipping can be very expensive and 11 of these might kill our channel. So we're gonna try to keep it within North America, but I am bendable with that. So huge shout out for the people at Slow Pour Supply for sponsoring this. They didn't pay for this video, but they did send these pictures for you guys, which is beyond amazing. And they're my they're my team. I love them so much. I've been I've been a fan of them since day one. Give them a follow on Instagram below if you can. Also give me a follow if you're going there, might as well. Kill two birds with one stone, though I don't believe in killing birds. Uh, anyway, back to the video. Number eight, flowing too fast or the opposite, too light. So what happens is people will start their pour right after integration, but they will tilt the pitcher so much that it is filling the cup up in a couple of seconds, which a couple of things. Congratulations, you did fill the cup up quickly. However, you did it inefficiently. And in this case, what happens is it ends up filling the design too much. You get a very heavy displacement of foam on top and your cup might spill over. The problem with filling up your cup too fast is that, well, one, you might spill. Two, you're taking away all the opportunity to make that design any more complex. And the opposite can also be a problem. If you fill the cup up too lightly with not enough flow, the design may not move anywhere. Even if, with our other rules before, you start really early in all of those scenarios, if you're not flowing heavy enough, then you're not gonna get that design to move anywhere in your cup. And small hearts. They're cute, but small hearts. So try to live somewhere in the middle. I like to describe it as a pencil or Sharpies with flow. Those are usually the amounts of flow that you need to execute pours. Anything more than that is pretty quick in filling up that cup a lot. Now there are some pours that go that way, but not for beginners. And anything less than that isn't gonna give you anything that, that moves in your cup. So, worlds in between. All right, number nine, 
And this one is a big one, which is cutting through the design. And I see this all the time. What people will do is, is they'll start pouring and they'll be doing their pour, they'll be doing their pour and they finish their pour, but instead of lifting up in a way on a diagonal with the pull through, they go through the design. They stay low and they drag the pitcher through the design. I will say this. Cutting through this way can be an aesthetical choice for some advanced latte artists. And I personally love it when you cut through the top part very deep, but you cut normally through the rest of the design. That being said, this is normally seen as a blemish. So to correct this, the next time you want to cut through a design, lift up and away on a diagonal and you should be good. And also you wanna make sure your flow rate is not too heavy here or you'll end up sinking a lot of the design you've already made. But if it's too light, well then that flow is gonna trickle out and spill droplets on your cut through. So a nice pencils width and committed cut through is the way to go. Number 10, and this is the biggest one. This happens to everybody. This happens to advanced baristas, competitors. It happens to beginners and that's hesitation. I probably should have hesitated there. So anytime you take a second to, to think or even hesitate at all in latte art, well, the foam is gonna have an opportunity to rise up in the milk. It's constantly doing that, which is why before we pour, we are always swirling our milk in our pitcher to keep it loose. That way the milk and the foam are mixed together and it's not just foam on top. Well, even whenever you're doing your pour, if you hesitate even a second, just trying to decide, oh, what am I gonna do next? Well, that gives the milk opportunity to stiffen up on you, which is gonna make the design less beautiful. It's gonna be more clunky. It's gonna be harder to get the design done because you're gonna to have to use more force because there's more foam stiffened on the top of both of these. So to fix this, we need to pour with confidence and we need to know exactly what we're going to do before we do it. So whenever you're planning out your pour, say, oh, I'm gonna pour a heart, which means I'm gonna go in the center, which means that after integration, I'm gonna land in the center. If you were to integrate, and then be like, mm, where is the center? Well, that searching is gonna cost you precious time and precious foam. Confidence is key. I like to think of it as the no hesitation station uh, and you should be good. The video says 10, but I'm giving you 11. If you are pouring into a cylindrical cup, then you're gonna have a lot harder time pouring latte art. This issue incorporates almost all of the tips that we were talking about today. It talks about the back wall and not wanting to hit that when you're pouring. It also talks about the amount of proximity you can get because as soon as you tilt this cup, the only opportunity you have to get the pitcher close to the surface is way later in the pour. You have to be almost completely full before that tilt even makes sense for you to get in there. Otherwise, the design is gonna warp as it flows up because when it's tilted very horizontally well this this circle is no longer that 2d circle we're going to have at the end it's an oblong shape now it's like an ellipse it's it's a different shape and as we turn the cup up well it's going to compress the design's not going to look right so what we do to fix this is you fill it up even more but like we talked about earlier the more you fill up the cup the more stiff that foam is going to be and you also only have a tiny percent of the space from where the liquid will be flat and circular. So it's really not ideal to pour in one of these. What you wanna do is you wanna pour into something, well, you don't wanna pour into this either because this has a closed off lip, which means it's gonna be harder for the pitcher to get past that lip. But generally speaking, you would want something more of a bowl shape. Actually here, I have a cup right here. So this is a good example. This is the shape of a bowl. It curves out and around. You can tilt this. It doesn't cut off your clearance here at the top for your pitcher to get in there. And you can go as far back as you want and have full control over your design anytime you want in the design. That's all I got for you today. I am done. I'm done. I'm out of, I'm out of things to say. Actually, that's not true. I have 20 more of these uh, corrections, but that's another video. You dirty scumbags. Don't get greedy. Is it okay that I call you scumbags? I, just, I think it's so endearing. You tell me in the comments if you don't like to be called scumbag, I won't call you a scumbag, you scumbags. Goodbye.